Let's talk about AI. And I've heard you be both, I think, optimistic and pessimistic about AI. So let's, let's make the, what's the optimistic case for AI? Is it going to do everything for us? Well, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I, 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 there's a pro there are probabilities associated with it. With it, it's not. It's not one cannot be, um, I think, 100% optimistic or completely pessimistic. Um, you know, I, I generally would agree with um, Jeff Hinton. Um, you know, he's one of the sort of godfathers of uh, AI. Post on the X platform, by the way, <laughs> as as is most of the AI community. Um, and uh, you know, he thinks it's sort of 10, 20 percent probability of something terrible happening. Um, so 10 to 20 probability of what happening? Something terrible. Which is like, what? How bad is something I don't know. terrible? Can like, I would, um, and um, could it make us more creative? I mean, in that sense, it, it, it will. It will certainly amplify creativity. Uh, and I think you will kind of have like a, a magic genie sort of situation where. It, if you can think of it, the AI can do it. Um, and in, in, the, in the positive scenario, the AI will be doing its best to make you happy. So that might work out pretty well. I mean, if some super intelligence is trying its hardest to make you happy, it'll probably succeed. The extinction of the world's population. Look, but, but now, this, this may sound great, but I think there will perhaps be a crisis of meaning. Um, if, if the AI can do everything that you can do, but better, then what is the point of doing things? So th that's, th I think there will be a bit of a sort of existential crisis of why do anything. It will be like the Roman Empire, the, at the peak of the Roman Empire. Yeah, with, with AI and robots. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think we, we, we are headed to an age of abundance. Um, I, I think we, we're, we're at the most interesting time in history. So this is the most interesting of times. Um, and it'll most likely be good, but we want to be careful about a potential downside. And how long is it? Are we going to see the impact in the next one year, 10 years, 20 years? Is it five? How long is it going to take to really change things? I don't think it's changed things yet, has it? I think it's going to change things very fast. Very fast. Yeah, very fast. Um, so I think you'll see quite radical changes even year next year, um, and very, very radical changes within five years. Where are we on? Where, or where are you on optimism? Well, Optimus is intended to be a um, sort of a fully functional humanoid, humanoid robot. Um, um, and it, it'll be capable of doing a wide range of tasks. So basically, if you, you can just ask it to walk your dog, take care of your house, babysit the kids, teach cook the dinner. kids, uh, cook, cook, cook dinner, play the piano. Um, so it's a... Uh, you know, it's a generalized humanoid robot. I, I think, I think everyone will want one. Because why not? You know. And so, and then there will be. So I think there'll be at least one for every person, and then um, a whole bunch more in industry making things. So I think there'll be. My guess is twenty billion. -ish. Twenty billion humanoid <laughs> humanoid robots yes. out there. We definitely need to in be careful long? that they don't, you know, go all too many. Are they going to look like people? You going to look really like people or distinguishable from people? You could make them look like people. Would you do that? Or you? Uh, we don't. We're not, we're not currently planning on doing that. What do they look like today? Like uh, you can see some videos online. Yeah, it looks like a robot. Um, you know, we want it to be a good-looking robot. Um, not like C3PO or something. Uh, no, but I think people will start to regard their personal Optimus robot as as sort of a friend, and like um, you know, in, in, obviously in Star Wars, uh, R2D2 and C3PO were you, know, you, you sort of 
like them. I mean, you got quite attached to those characters. You know? I mean, if you, if you watch that OpenAI, some of the latest OpenAI demos with the fake Scarlett Johansson voice, right? I mean, you can imagine people talking to it, can't you, and getting yeah, on yeah. with it. Like it has a humor and a tone of voice and a... Yes. Yeah, we'll it'll be, it's going brand, to be a wild future. I guess we can build brand robots, you know, from McDonald's or... Yeah. I think we will personalize the Optimus, Optimus robots. Um, because you, you, can, you can snap on different parts. Like the, the outer shell is a, a snap on plastic, plastic parts. So you, you could have different what, um, A lot of young people in the audience, you know, young creators, what advice would you give to people starting out their careers today? Apart from, you don't have to work, so. Yeah, well, there'll be obviously a, you know, a transition period uh, to, to, as AI gets better and better. I mean, the companies that will succeed in this transition period will be the ones that most effectively use AI. So if, if you're doing something and making maximum use of AI and you're competing against someone who is not, you will win. So the AI is not bullshit, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Um, no, it's getting better very rapidly. It's going to change things for the better and ten, one chance in five existentially for the worst. But this, there's definitely some risk. Um, it's an immensely powerful thing. So. It's something immensely powerful is, is uh, created. Uh, now we're also seeing um, incredible image generation um, where companies like Midjourney make beautiful images instantly. Um, now it still takes some skill to get the best pictures out of Midjourney. So there's, there's a talent to creating compelling pictures. You're also seeing uh, a video, which is just a bunch of pictures, essentially. Um, so you, you'll be able to create videos uh, and pictures, and, and can already create pictures that are very compelling. Um, if you need to write something, then the various uh, AI, things like Brock or Gemini, ChatGPT, can help you write things. Yeah. Um, when I talked to my son in, in, in university, and he's uh, was like, how many of your classmates are using AI to help them write things. And he said, all of them. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> um, I thought there was like anti-plagiarism software they could run it through. Or they, they rewrite it afterwards, like cleverly. Yes, but then there's another bit of software that defeats the anti-plagiarism software. <laughs> there's so always like some more, spy versus someone more spy clever, versus spy versus... someone cleverer than the regulator out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so. You have anti-plagiarism software for, that detects yeah. the use of anti-plagiarism software yeah. against plagiarism, like a reduction um, to the absurd. Yep. So that, that's already being used uh, a lot. Um, I think that there's going to be a significant disruption in internet search um, because it, really for internet search you're just looking for, for an answer. So if, if the AI can provide you with a better answer than a bunch of links, then You'll prefer that over Google or Bing. It's really the, what 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 AI is doing and what the internet is doing is aggregating the the wisdom of the people. Yeah. Um, 